And um, I will share to you this afternoon about holiness to host the anointing of God. And that's very important. So let's read Joshua. Go with me in Joshua 3, verse 5. It says in here, Then Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Adonai will do wonders in your midst. Joshua speak to the Kohanim, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over ahead of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went into ahead of the people. In other translations, it says, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow God will do great wonders among you. That's the New Living Translation. And other translations it says, God will perform miracles. In another translation it says, a Net Bible it says, Get up, sanctify yourself for tomorrow God will do miraculous deeds for you. Amen. And the second verse will be Luke 4, 18. Let's go there. It says in Luke 4, 18, The Roa, or the Holy Spirit, is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim and release to the captives and recovery of the sight of the blind. I'm reading on the um, Holy Scripture, the Tree of Life version. So um, let's all be seated. Father, we thank you, O God, this afternoon, O Lord, for the power of thy word. We believe, O God, that the Holy Spirit is the programmer. We believe that the Holy Spirit, O Lord God, will direct, will guide, and um, bless us this afternoon, O Lord God. Father, we lift up the name of Yeshua upon this place by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, O Lord God. We thank you and we give you praise, O Lord God, for you are exalted, O Lord, in this place. You are magnified and glorified in this place, O Lord God. Let our lives, O God, holy and acceptable before you this afternoon, O Lord, as we share, O Lord God, about holiness, O God, in order to host, O Lord God, your glory, O Lord, in your anointing. In your name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. This verse in, um, in Joshua, it says that, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow God will do wonders. And in other verses, it says, Get up. Sanctify yourselves. Why is it that there is a command that says, Get up? What are we doing? Are we sitting? Are we sleeping? What are we doing? Why is it that get up exclamation point? If we are already on the go and we are already in action, nobody will tell you, get up. But maybe we are in deep slumber. And in some verses, it says that you are in stupor. What is stupor? It's a temporary sleep. Or you are sleeping a little bit. Or you are dormant. It says, wake up from drunken stupor. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 34. So the word of God says that get up or wake up. Is it that the word is saying to us that we have to be alert because we are half awake or half asleep? Why is it that it is a command that says wake up and then exclamation point? I know that when there is an exclamation point, it needs to be an action that will follow. It is a command that you have to do it. You have to hasten it or you have to quicken it up. But if it is a comma, it says you pause a little bit because there is a comma. But it says in here, you wake up because you are in stupor. You are in a, in a drunken stupor and you are keeping on sinning. That's why the word of God says to us that wake up or rise up. It says, get up to yourself for tomorrow will God will do great wonders. So it says that we have to sanctify ourselves. Sanctify, purify, or cleanse. They are of all the same meaning. So it says sanctify, 
means also to purify. So it says, it is a rites, you know, R-I-T-E-S, it is a rites that you will perform. Uh, people will be uh, preparing for themselves because tomorrow they're going to meet the Lord. So today it says that you prepare yourself Sanctify yourself today because in preparation tomorrow is something to happen. What will happen tomorrow? Tomorrow God will do wonders in the midst of you. Tomorrow will do, God will do a miraculous uh, um, deeds to you tomorrow. So today you have to prepare. In order for us to host the anointing of God, we have to start in our lives today that we have to sanctify and to purify ourselves. And um, in the verse in here it says that, Joshua 7, 11, they sinned and transgressed my covenant. What are the covenants of God? We know we were studying the covenants of God, and we learned that Sabbath is a covenant. The feast of the Lord are the covenants, and the important high Shabbat of God is covenant. So he says here that um, they transgressed, including the covenants of God. So it says here, you are an accursed, Joshua 7, 11. They sinned and transgress. And also it says in another verse, it says, take away, take away. Somebody reported to Joshua that somebody is doing a uh, sexual sin among, in the camp. So somebody report to Joshua that there is one there or whoever in the midst of them, in the midst of them, they are hidden things. They hid something. They have sexual immorality in the midst of them and they are hid, hiding it. That's why the Lord says, take away. In order for you to defeat the enemy, you must not have a hidden sin or, immo or, or immorality in the midst of you because you want God to move in your lives, then take away all of this. You are in a curse because you transgress and you sin. You take away this sexual immorality in the midst of you, it says here. So, in Lamentation 3, verses 40 and 41, it says there, let us search and try our ways and let's gather together. So there is a need of examination to ourselves because we will never defeat the enemy. We want to, to raise the dead. We want to heal the sick. We want to uh, set the captives free. But we don't have power because we have hidden sin in us. We have hidden sin in our hearts. But we want miracles. We want God to, to move in miraculous signs in our hearts. But our sin and our hidden sin hinders the works of God in our lives. Um, I am saying this because I know that this church is called for healing and deliverance. And if we will not st start in our lives personally, how can we attain the, um, the benefit of healing and deliverance if we will not start it to ourselves? And um, when Joshua called the people, they called it by tribes. Tribes. And then when the tribes come, they call them by family. And then when the family comes, they call them by household. Why is it that by group, God called Brownwood, God called Book of Acts now. And then when Book of Acts gather, he will call families. And then when family gathers, he calls each household, individual household, then they will move forward. Then when they are fo forward, God will call one by one. So God call us a corporate group, and then he will call us as a tribe, and then he will call us as a, um, uh, a family and household, and then individually he will call us. God is God of specifics. He really cares for spe specifications because we cannot we cannot say to God that I have done this because nothing in our works in God is hidden. Everything is sent by God. And he has a record of what we are doing. So how can I connect this to anointing? When I start in holiness, why is it that I will start in holiness so that I can reach an anointing? Because there is no way that we can get the anointing of God if we are living in sin, if we have hidden sin in the midst of us. So let me try um, to uh, share to you about anointing. What is anointing? Anointing in Isaiah 10, 27, it says that the yoke shall destroy, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And what is the meaning of anointing? Through anointing, 
we are set free from the bandage of oppression. It says here that anointing is fat. Anointing is outgrowth. Um, when your neck is growing and if you have fats, it will burst because you outgrow, you expand. It's like wings. When you expand your wings and when you exp expand fats, so it will burst because it's more power in there and it's more strength like that. It, it has fats in there, it outgrows, it multiplies. It says that God provides power, authority and gifts. The anointing oil that we have here, this has no power. This is only the representation of the Holy Spirit, but the power of God is the one that breaks the yokes of the enemy. And it is the gift of God if we have the anointing. It's not the, it's not the anointing oil. That's only the representation. It says God provides power and gifts to his people for, for this purpose, for this purpose. And um, where is the burden usually? It's on the shoulder, right? So when God anoints us, when we receive anointing from God, this burden that makes us weary and makes us down, this will be lifted up. And then, where is the yoke? Does the yoke situated in your, in your head? It's in your neck. So, God will break the yoke in our neck, and God will remove, will remove and uplift the, anoint, the, the heaviness in our shoulder, in our, our burdens from our shoulder. So that's the anointing. The anointing removes the burden, and the anointing breaks the yoke. So we better aspire for the anointing of God rather than the riches of this world. And it says, burden will be lifted up from your shoulder, and yoke will be consumed in the presence of the anointing of God. So in Hebrew, it says that anointing in Hebrew is memshak. It says memshak in Hebrew. So meaning expansion. Meshak means outspread. So when we have the anointing of God in this house, we outspread, we expand, and we grow bigger and stronger and stronger in the power of God. So that's the thing. Uh, my, my husband and I, when we go somewhere, he said to me that I am not running after the wealth and riches. I saw preachers there with a lot of layers of gold here and a lot of, of decorations. And says, I'm not aspiring for that. I just want the anointing of God, he said. So when we go travel, we are not worried about finances because we know that God will provide and when he released the anointing, just people are just blessing him because, because of the anointing of God. Because the first motive is not money, it's not riches, but the motive is the anointing to heal the sick and to raise the dead and to set the, the oppression of the, of the people. And uh, I will speak a little bit about anointing. And um, can I use you as an example, the two brothers, um, yeah, Satan, uh, Brother Kimbrough and uh, Brother Mike. Um, it says that the anointing of oil in gladness is that when you see a person in that also, <laughs> I'm using as an example, if you are full of the anointing of oil of gladness and joy, it is really visible. And People can see it and you will outrun others because it will be seen in you. Your laughter and your smile will, will define who you are in the Lord because you believe in his righteousness, you live in, in God's righteousness, and you can see, I know a lot of people here, they are just bursting in laughter. That's why when Jerry prays, oh, the joy of the Lord, oh, the anointing of the joy of the Lord, because in, in, in the anointing of the Lord, is, there is oil of gladness and joy. So it is very important that when you are saved, one of the reasons that you exhibit the uh, extreme joy, gladness, is the anointing of God, the anointing of joy and gladness. So it represents the Holy Spirit. You know this anointing oil? It's only a representation. It is a designation of the office in the uh, early churches and in the kings and queens, they are anointed. They pour oil on those because they are designated for an office. It is uh, a designation of the role of an office. So they use anointing for, for the kings. And also, anointing indicates 
you are ordained, you are sanctioned to do something. Our president is sanctioned to do something, to protect America and to lead the people of America. If you are anointed, if you are, um, if the anointing oil is poured in you, you are sanctioned and you are ordained for an office which they use during those times. And also today, if you are called by God, you are sanctioned and you are ordained and you are anointed. They pour oil in you. And also, priesthood is always ordained by God. It's not the intention of men, but it is always the intention of God to be a priesthood. And also, uh, when uh, the name Yeshua, uh, the Christ, it says the anointed one. So it says there, Yeshua, the Lord's anointed. He is the Lord's anointed. And Luke 4, 8, and it says that the Spirit of God um, is upon Yeshua. And he is set to set the oppressed free. He gives sight to the blind. He declares the uh, jubilee, the year of the Lord, and uh, to proclaim the Lord's favor. So the name Christ means the anointed one. And, uh, and look for 18, which is our, the theme of our church. Yeshua fulfilled all these prophecies in, in Luke 418. And also, our God Yeshua gives clarity to Acts 1013. How God anointed Yeshua of Nazareth. And also, he gives power on Yeshua HaMashiach. So, we will have our painting here. And it is done already, and I'm about to pick it up, but I'm just so busy. But it is the painting that we got from Israel. It is the feet, and there was a garment, and there is a hand that is reaching on the garment of this, uh, of this man. And it's only a feet, and we will put it here. It was ready already, but I have no time to, to pick it up. So our calling revolves on this. And Yeshua room around and healing people all. He heals all the sick. And that's why when we pray here yesterday, uh, I mean sh um, Thursday, we pray. And I ask this person that we pray, from the count of 10, what do you think? Do you receive healing from 1 to 10? And then he said, half. So I said, Yeshua heals all. There is no half, there is no one third, there is no one fourth. Because this is, this is his promise that he said that, Yeshua, the anointed one from Nazareth, with his power, and went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. If a person is sick, he is oppressed by the devil of sickness. So, this is the reason that the Son of Man is called to destroy all the works of the enemy, for God was with him. So we will aspire also that God is with us so that when we go around, we can lay our hands upon people because the power that is in Yeshua, that is also in us. And he said that he is seated in the heavenly places and all the demonic forces is under his feet. So if we are seated with him, level, like here when, when I sit down here, Yeshua is on my right side, I sit with him. His feet, his feet is under the enemy. And if my feet is leveled with Yeshua's feet and my my chair is level with him. I, I am seated with him. Where is the enemy also? He is also under my feet, the same as Yeshua, because of my oneness in him. So if we know who we are in the Lord, that's why I used to sing a declaration that I know who I am. Because if I am one in Yeshua, I'm seated with him in the heavenly places. All demonic forces is under my feet. As Yeshua is stepping the demonic forces, I step in the uh, demonic forces also because I sit with him. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I said the oil of gladness in John 3, 5, 9. The oil of gladness is undeniable. You know why? Because when you see the person a little bit, he is joyful. I can see men here, mighty men of David, even though they are sweating in the heat, but I can see they are laughing they are joking. They are not saying, this is so heavy, this is too hot, and this and that. And I hear that because the Spirit of God is upon them, and you cannot deny it. It is evident, even for Dad, when we go to his house, and when Dad doesn't go in the church, went out of town or, or out of state, it's like the atmosphere is different because their laughter, 
and their joy is undeniable. Other people think that they are joking, but it's like inside of them. It flows naturally. It says that when we are with Vishu, our righteousness is natural for us. We will not struggle to be righteous because it just go out naturally from our heart because we are used to it. So um, it is easy for us to exhibit natural love because we are used to love because our heart is overflowing with Yeshua's love. So that's what the oil of gladness will do to us. We hate wickedness, but we love righteousness. And it's easy for us to do it because we are used to do that. And we, we recognize right away wickedness because we are so entwined with the righteousness of Yeshua and we can right away detect the, the, the wickedness in, in a person. So. So the joy of the Lord, the oil of gladness is undeniable to you. You will excel than other people. And people will always say, what is in him that I don't have? Because he laughed. Not the laughter of jokes or whatever, but something in him that you cannot deny. So we tend uh, to see people that I want what he have. Because it's undeniable. You cannot hide it. It is visible. And... Um, Lastly, it says, God anoints us. God anoints us. In 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Second Corinthians 1, 21 and uh, 22. God anoints us. His Holy Spirit is the seal in us. He puts a seal in us which is the Holy Spirit. He sealed us with the Holy Spirit. But only those who receive Yeshua has that seal, the seal of the Holy Spirit. So we have five things in 2 Corinthians 1.21. God anoints us. God set an ownership with us, which is the Holy Spirit. He puts His Spirit in our heart. And the Holy Spirit is the deposit of God in our lives. He gives us the guarantee that whatever it comes in the future, we are, we are safe in His presence. And the Holy Spirit is the deposit of God in our lives. I recognize that the calling of this church is all about healing and deliverance. And before we get this church, God reveals that he is bringing families. He didn't say just couples, but he said family. Because God calls tribes. God calls family. God calls household. And God calls individually. So I believe that as we settled in here, we control our own atmosphere of worship. We control our own holiness in this place because we are not shared usage with anyone. So I believe that God's anointing will rest upon us as we humble ourselves. In the past, during the I, we used to read a book about Azusa Street Revival. And everything that we read there, we pray and we claim. We want to sit in the Shekinah glory of God. We want the fire at the roof of our building to come back and forth rises up and down. We, we want that even the policemen will say, what is happening in your building? It is smoky. We want to have that. And during that, we started to pray. And we started to call for the glory and the anointing of God with our people, starting in our lives, starting in ourselves. So um, we used to read all those books that will quicken our spirit. What shall we do? What God requires of us to get this anointing? How can it be cool when we, when we uh, raise the dead and when we heal the sick we when we pray the lame walked when we pray the deaf will hear when we pray the mute will sick i want to see that i remember when i was in the conference before i was young that time the first time i arrived here in america i went to a, a conference and it says to me do your hands like this like a bowl and you catch the fire of god and the anointing of god 
but since I was young in my faith, I am so scared that I might melt in the presence of God because I didn't understand. But when I get married and said that we have this calling and the healing and deliverance and we need an anointing to do this, then I remember the time that the prophet told me, hold your hand like this and catch the fire of God and he will give it to you because he entrusted you. And I remember this prophet anoint my feet and he said that this feet will walk on nations. I didn't even know there is calling is, is for the nations. I didn't know, but I received it. And he said, as a prophetic act, do your hands like this. But I was so scared because it says that no one can stand in the presence of God and will remain the same. So I was crying. I said, I may not handle his anointing, but today I understand when we are having this, this gathering here, I understand. And I told God, I'm ready. When is your glory going to fall? When is your fire going to, to fall? Because my hands, I want my hands to be used. In other people's ministry, you cannot be a member of their ministry if you didn't raise up the dead, if you didn't heal the sick. That's why I was laughing. You want to go to Africa to, do the, to face the voodoo? You didn't even pray and heal the headache in America, but you want to go to Africa because you want to face the voodoo in there? Try your faith here in America, only in headache and stomach ache. When we go to IMI, International Miracle Institute, it says here, you want to travel nations because you want to heal the sick, raise the dead? You didn't even heal even a single headache of a boy here in America. You want to travel to nations? And for me, it was a challenge. And I remember all the seminars that I attend when I was younger, when I was first time here in America. I was single. I can just fly and jump whenever seminars are. So I used to go to healing and uh, uh, healing conferences and uh, symposiums like that. That's where I learn a lot in the deeper teaching seminar. So I thank God this afternoon that is, it's my privilege to speak a little bit um, about the calling of this church. And God will not fail you in us because I know Jerry's heart. Praise the Lord. So. Um, God will strengthen us. God will anoint us if we humble ourselves before him. And um, when God calls us to do this, we have to be prepared. And in conclusion, um, we have to remain in the sanctifying power of the Most High God. We have to remain in the purification of God in our lives. Let's sanctify our lives because we will never know when is the anointing will, I mean, when is the wonders and the miracles of God will come. But let's just prepare for today, hoping that tomorrow God's uh, miraculous hands and power will be upon us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, when we desire this kind of purity and sanctification and uh, um, holiness, um, let's pray to God that God will show us his wonders and his miracles. And when we need prayer this afternoon, I trust Prophet Olivia and uh, Brother uh, Kimbrough and maybe Dad to come up in here. If somebody wants to receive prayer, we will pray for them. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father.